Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be testing out some of our favorite emulators on the all new Apple MacBook Pro with the all new Apple Silicon. Now I've actually been super excited about this. Not that it's a new MacBook coming out, but that it's powered by an ARM chip. And by the way, before we even get started, this is not my personal MacBook. I was actually lucky enough to borrow this from one of my buddies who just bought it before he even opened it up he let me use it for this test here. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I'm very partial to ARM-based single board computers, and this isn't much different. This is not running an Intel CPU. This is not running an AMD CPU. This is Apple Silicon. It's known as the M1 chip, and it's an ARM CPU. Now keep in mind, when we get into running these retro emulators, they were never designed to run on an ARM chip. They were actually designed to run on x86 because that's all these Macs have been powered by for a very long time. But what Apple has done is introduce something called Rosetta 2. It's a dynamic binary translator and it creates an application compatibility layer between x86 and the M1 chip or these ARM chips that are in these new MacBooks. So really, when it comes down to it, we're actually running an emulator inside of an emulator. And it's kind of weird to think about, but I've been really wanting to get my hands on one of these M1 chips so I could test out some emulation on it. I also want to get into some gaming, but this video is strictly dedicated to emulation. We're going to test out some Dreamcast, PSP, N64, GameCube, and Wii. But before we jump right into it, I do want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. So we have the 2020 MacBook Pro. This is the base model. It's got the Apple M1 CPU, 8 cores up to 3.2 gigahertz. We also have 8 GPU cores and 8 gigs of RAM. So now it's time to see how this thing really performs with emulation. I'm going to plug this into my game capture. I'll be using one of the Thunderbolt ports on the side here to do HDMI out to that. And as for the controller I'll be using, it's this SN30 Pro. It's a Bluetooth controller and it does connect right up to this MacBook here. It works with everything that I've tested, but it's actually detected as a PS4 controller. All right, so we're starting off with Dreamcast using the standalone Redream emulator. I'm upscaled to 3840 by 2880. That's as high as we can go with it. And you'll notice I'm not in full screen mode, and that's because I can't get this CPU and GPU overlay to work in full screen mode. It just goes behind everything. But I have tested it, and it works just as well. I mean, there's really no reason it wouldn't work great in full screen mode. But as you can see, Dreamcast on this M1 MacBook is really great. And we're upscaled as high as we can go with the Redream emulator. So I got one more for Dreamcast to test after this game, then we'll move over to PSP. Okay, so with PSP, I can't get the standalone version to work, nor can I get the version inside of RetroArch to work. So what I'm using here is OpenEMU. If you're familiar with emulation on Mac, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. OpenEMU works absolutely amazing. There's a ton of different emulators that are available here, but the options are very limited, so I wasn't able to upscale at all with PSP. As soon as the developers of PPSSPP get a working version for these M1 Macs, I will run another test, but seeing how it's running at 1x here, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do 3 and 4 with all the games you're going to see running in this video. It actually works really well and it runs these harder to emulate games just fine. Here we have Midnight Club Dub Edition. Next up, you'll see Chains of Olympus.
Next up, we have N64, still here with OpenEMU, and as you can see, I mean, it's performing great. This is Diddy Kong Racing, I also tested 007 GoldenEye, and going into this, I figured that N64 would work well. So the standalone version of Citra, the 3DS emulator, was working fine. As you can see here, I'm running Dead or Alive Dimensions. We're at 1x resolution using the OpenGL backend, and we're getting pretty good performance here. But as soon as I shut this game down and tried to open up another one, I couldn't get anything to work. Citra kept crashing on me. I rebooted the MacBook several times trying to get it to work, but unfortunately, it just won't work again. Now, I'm sure I could go through, uninstall this completely, reinstall it, and start another game, but it might happen again, so I kind of wanted to put this off to the side for now. But I do see this emulator running quite well on Apple Silicon in the future. The final emulator that I tested was the standalone version of Dolphin for GameCube and Wii. We're at 1080p, and performance was very, very surprising here. You'll see these first couple games running great at 1080p, and this was the resolution I initially started with. I didn't even try the native resolution. I just went straight up just to see what it would do, and if it was going to malfunction, I was going to back it back off. So I moved over to one of the harder games to run, which is F-Zero GX. We're still at 1080p using the Vulcan back end. Performance is amazing here. Really surprised to see this running at 1080p. I mean, this is kind of one of my go-to tests. There's a lot of effects on screen, and as you can see, we get minimal dips. I have seen it dip down every once in a while, but not low at all. I mean, it really wasn't noticeable during gameplay. Another harder to run game that I usually test is Automotolista. 1080p, Vulcan back in, and by this time, everything was running great at 1080p, so I figured we'd try to go up to 4K with it. So from the game, I just paused it, went right into the Dolphin settings, saved my game, upped it to 4K from 1080p, went right back into the game, and went full screen with it. And as you can see, it's still running it perfectly fine. 60 FPS, 4K on this Apple M1 chip is pretty awesome in my opinion. Now like I mentioned at the beginning, this is actually using Rosetta 2 to emulate x86 so we can emulate a GameCube game. So basically, we have two emulators running here at the same time and we're able to achieve this performance. To tell you the truth, I was pretty blown away by how well it ran this emulator. And since I was still here with the Dolphin emulator, I figured I'd throw a couple Wii games at it. I didn't even bother going back down to 1080p, seeing the performance in Automoto least at 4K, so both of these Wii games you're going to see are running at 4K with the Vulcan back in. So all in all, emulation performance here is actually really great. Now it's still really early, so there are some emulators that aren't working. I definitely ran into some issues with Citra. I couldn't get the standalone version of PPSSPP working. And when I tried to launch PSP games inside of RetroArch, it just crashed out on me. So it definitely needs some work. The developers need to get these in their hands so they can get this stuff working better. 
But going into this, I really wasn't expecting this kind of performance. And seeing that this is the first generation of Apple Silicon, this is probably going to be really awesome in the future for emulation. But I'm personally not going to be swapping out my x86 Windows slash Linux machine for something like this, at least not at this time. But who knows, maybe a couple years down the road, this Apple Silicon's really going to take off and be ultra powerful. But as it sits right now, this was the first release, and I do have to say it, I'm actually impressed. I went into this not really wanting to like this chip, but coming out of it, it's not bad at all. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will have this in my possession for about the next three days. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this MacBook, just let me know what it is in the comments below and maybe I can get a video made. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.